In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the pose you want. This technique is often used in design, share it on pages like 433, and it gives a unique touch to design. First, let's start with the where we can create this pose. I use the iPad version of the Magic Poser app, but you can also use it on their website. I will put the link below. By the way, this is not a sponsor video, just so you know. Here, I start creating the pose by adjusting the joints. I'm using this image as a reference, but you are completely free to create any pose you want, really anything you want. First, from the color section, you can change the skin tone of the figure. There are plenty of options to choose from, I'm selecting this one. To help me out, I'm also adding light here. This way I can see which parts are receiving light and which parts are in shadow. If you like to, you can also change the color of the light. I will go with red. Additionally, you can increase the brightness if needed. Finally, you can adjust the camera angle. You can make the figure appear from a wider or narrower perspective, depending on your preference. After creating the pose, I click the camera icon below and then the icon on the right. From there, I select to the image. I usually turn off the sky and the ground option keeping only transparent background enabled and of course i export it in high quality now let's move on to photoshop once the pose is ready it's time to dress it up for this you will need to find images that match your pose be warned this will take a long time once you have collected the images with the correct angles you can start assembling your player piece by piece first i will start with the right arm i found this image that matches the arm's angle i cut out the part from the shoulder to the arm and position it accordingly when positioning there are three important tools that will help us the first one is puppet warp go to edit in the top left then select puppet warp Place three points on the joints and start adjusting. To make it easier to match with the reference, you can lower the opacity. By the way, if you want to see these parts in more detail, I will upload the speed art video to my Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can access the speed art video. The PSD file will also be available. Next, let's move on to the left arm. I found this image that fits the arm angle. Here, I will only cut out the slave part of the jersey. I will create the rest using different images. After positioning it, I will use the second important tool, Warp. Select the image, press Ctrl T, right click and choose Warp, then start adjusting it. After spending some time tweaking, you will achieve the desired result. Once that's done, let's move on to the torso. I quickly cut out the relevant part and position it. First, I use Warp for quick adjustment. Then I will use the third important tool, Liquify. Before using Liquify, convert your layer to smart object so you can make changes later if needed. Once done, go to filter at the top and select Liquify. Enable show backdrop on the right and select your reference pose. Now adjust it as needed to match the body's shape. Once you're done, click OK. To ensure smooth transition between images, I use a soft brush to erase the edges, creating seamless blends. If the colors of the images you have used don't match, press Ctrl U to quickly adjust them. Using these three important tools, I create the remaining parts as well. The key here is finding images at the correct angles that fit your reference pose. This is important. Once you have them, you assemble your player piece by piece. That completes this step. Now it's time for lightning and shading. I'm going to show you a very useful technique for this step. First, I leave only the pose we created visible. Then go to the top menu and click on select color range. From the drop down, choose shadows. The white areas you see below represent the shadows. Adjust the settings as needed and click OK. As you can see, this is automatically selects the shadow areas. Next, select the group containing the upper body of Palmer then add a levels adjustment layer. When you lower the brightness, the shadows start to become visible. I also manually paint over parts, I don't like to refine them. You can use the same method for highlights, but this time choose highlights instead. Personally, I prefer painting highlights manually. For the head, I start painting based on the reference image. When it comes to the face, I usually use curves because it allows you to easily adjust brightness, contrast and even the color. I use regular brush, nothing fancy, I just set the flow to 5 and start painting. 
I uploaded a video about this to my channel so check it out for more details. I paint areas where shadows should fall. Adding light, I also use curves but you can use levels or exposure if you prefer. I paint the illuminated areas by referring to the pose. Once the shading and lighting are complete, the player looks like this. Now let's create the background. From this point on, it's all up to your imagination. I will use the reference image and create something similar for the environment. I will keep this part short. First, I draw the icy road, then place ice textures on it and erase the extra parts. To make the background more vibrant, I use solid color layers and add light and shadow. Then I position these two images. I soften the bottom of the iceberg on the right to make it less distracting. For the left side, I adjust the color slightly. Again, I use solid color layers to make the background pop. The icy road looks flat right now, so I'm adding shadows to give it a 3D effect. I'm also erasing some of the back parts. Now I adjust Palmer's colors. At this point, I will make Palmer's feet and hands look icy. Here's a great technique I learned from Nemanji Sekulic on YouTube. I hope I pronounced that right. First, duplicate Palmer's group, merge it, and convert it onto a smart object. Then open hue saturation and check colorize, adjust it to blue tones to make it look icy. Next, duplicate Palmer's layer again and go to filter, filter gallery, choose chrome and click ok. Set the blend mode to screen and double click the layer. In the blend of settings, remove the dark areas by holding ALT to separate the sliders. Click OK. Duplicate Palmer's layers again, press Ctrl U and reduce saturation. Then go back to filter, filter gallery, but this time select glass. Adjust as needed, then click OK. Set the blend mode to overlay and press Ctrl I to invert. This looks better, maybe we can reduce the opacity a bit and nice. Now group all these layers and add an ice texture on top. Set the blend mode to lighter color. Remove the dark areas in the blend of settings and lower the fill slightly. That's it. Now mask and paint the areas you want. I'm applying this effect to the feet and arms and it's done. Finally, I'm adding an orange light on the right side. If you didn't know, orange is the complementary color of blue, so it creates a nice contrast. I also add light from below to specific areas. Lastly, I create an orange solid color layer and paint the highlights on the player. If you haven't watched my video on adding highlights, go check it out now. After adding light to the old areas and making the final tweaks, our design is complete. I hope this video was helpful. If you like to watch the full process as a speed art video and download the PSD file for this design, you can join my Patreon. And see you in the next video.